Uh, let's discuss the question paper of 2022, uh, November. We see the memorandum, how uh, people performed uh, in this paper. MCID, as usual. Download it from thundereduke.com. Check the link in the description below. Um, section A. Various options are provided. It means that you're supposed to look for A, B, C, D. Which one of the following maintains the shape of the eyeball? The eyeball is being maintained by vitreous humor. Uh, let me check the nice color to use. I love that. So is vitreous humor. Uh, let me check, let me check, sorry. Mm, yep. Um, yep, all right, sorry for that. Eh? Just to confirm if everything's working well, okay. The answer is C, cornea, no, lens, no. The shape is being maintained by vitreous humor. So there you get two marks. Then they're saying that the choroid dash, uh, rich supplied with blood vessels, containing photoreceptors, electrolytes, and impulse. No, the answer is uh, A, richly supplied with blood vessels. So two marks. I'm um, going through very fast, um, just a highlight of uh, this paper they have written uh, without explaining that too much. But uh, if I say that there is a need to explain a bit, I'll just do just a hint. Uh, they're saying that um, 1.3, which one of the following occurs immediately after fertilization? Um, when after fertilization you form a zygote, which forms a morula, which forms a blastula, which forms the outer layer, which is called the uh, chorionic, uh, chorion forms finger-like projection to form um, chorionic villi and then implantation. So uh, blastula can't be the first, can't morula, yes, but it's not hollow. So it's out, blastula, no. So the answer is D, two marks. So morula is a solid ball of cells. Then he's saying that on hot day, uh, expect more sweat. Né? Yeah. So you're saying that less blood vessel, no sweat gland become inactive. Inactive, no. Uh, blood, uh, more blood flow through the surface of the skin. Yes, vasoconstriction. No. So the answer is C. So you get two marks here. Then they're saying that um, the normal shape, uh, sorry, the normal site where fertilization occurs in a female is uterus no over no vagina no fallopian tube yes get two marks there so it means that on that first page you're supposed to get 10. Uh, then you're saying that uh, 1.6 which one of the following is best describes the event of uh accommodation when a person is um when a person is viewing the object which is less than six mirrors. Less than six mirrors, it means that uh, this is near vision. Yes, if it's less than six meters, uh, remember in near vision, the lens must become more convex. And then the suspensor ligament must slacken. So let's look at uh, slackening. So it means that the answer may either be this or this. So this one is out now, this one is out. And then they're saying that uh, cilia muscles must um, must be, they must contract because they work antagonistically. This slackens, the other one must contract. Therefore, the answer is B. Mm. So this one it means this one is wrong. Ah, they're saying that um, the axon, so this is a sensory neuron. The axon is represented by the structure the axon axon means the part of the of the in, uh, neuron which takes impulse away from the cell body so if the this is the cell body so this is what you call the axon 
So the answer is gonna be number four. So number four, you get two marks there again. Then they are saying that um, which one of the following levels affect uh, the speed of impulse, transmission of impulse, the speed is being affected by the myelin sheath. It's acting as an insulator. So in this case, if you look at this diagram, you'll find out that the myelin sheath is this, which is number three. Therefore, the answer here is going to be this. Then they are saying that um, this 1.1.9 up to 1.110 uh, procedure so as as follow. So they're saying that the far to the diagram below uh, that shows the investigation done to determine the effect of auxins on tropism. Uh, this is the procedure. They're saying the potted plant placed the horizontal clonostat. Clonostat is this machine which rotates. Then the plant was exposed to light from all directions, meaning that your photo, photo, phototropism will not affect. Uh, growth was observed after a few days. So how did it grow? Number one, they are saying that which one of the following is an explanation of the results? Okay, phototropism, because no. We said that phototropism will not affect. So whenever there is phototropism, we cancel it out. So the answer might be this or this. But they are saying that phototropism causes the auxins to move downwards because it is horizontally. Uh, look, if horizontally, if auxins are here at the tip, yes, they will be pulled downwards, yes, due to gravity. So we'll have much concentration of auxins this side. And then if you have much concentration of this auxins this side, the lower side will grow faster than the upper side, and then it will grow like that. But because light was distributed equally, so what caused this to bend is basically due to gravity, which is the uh, geotropism. Therefore, the answer the reason occurs because auxins move downwards. So the answer becomes B. So this one becomes wrong. I think that um, control for the same investigation was set up uh, by putting the identical pot plant uh, on a rotating clonostat. So the clonostat now is rotating. It means that it will bring about equal distribution of auxins. So auxins, uh, in this case, will be equally distributed, and then there will be no effect. So uh, they are saying that no, there will be no growth will be there. Stem will go upward. No, stem will grow down. Stem will grow horizontally. It means that the stem will come. Uh, just uh, sorry for just a small um um delay there there were some technical issues all right i was saying that um this causes the the stem will grow horizontally why because this clinostat the clinostat will rotate as this clinostat rotates yes the auxins will be distributed equally and then now the the, the 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 at a certain time t let me just say at a certain time t uh, so that now every part will receive the auxins equally at a certain time t and then now the growth will be equally and then now it will grow horizontally instead of bending so let's go to the biological terms so now it means that you are supposed to get 10 marks plus 10 marks which is 20 marks Hmm. Uh, biological terms, the part of the skull which uh, protects the, the brain, say that is called the cranium. Yes, it's called the cranium. Homeostasis process whereby temperature is controlled by the body. Thermal regulation. And then there's a visual defect characterized by cloudy. Cloudy is cataracts. Saying that the blood vessel which transports deoxygenated blood from 
the fetus. If it's from the fetus, it means that from the heart towards the other parts of the body, which is the placenta. So since it's from the heart, therefore it's going to have the word artery. And then since we are talking about the baby, then it's going to become umbilical, umbilical artery. Umbilical artery. Then they are saying that the part of the brain which controls temperature is hypothalamus. Then they are saying that the branch of the nervous system that is made up of spinal and the cranial nerves is called this since it is it's not if not the center then it's on sides which is the peri peripheral nervous system you complete it yes a finger like projection which is developed uh, outer membrane of the embryo so remember that you have the hollow ball of cells have a hollow ball of cells this hollow ball of cells it forms outer layer which forms finger like projection outer layer is called chorion finger like projection because it's coming from the chorion so it becomes the villi the villi of the chorion hence chorionic villi so it's going to be answer is going to be chorionic villi yes let us say the hormone that regulates the salt in the body is aldosterone they say the fruit that protects the developing fetus against mechanical injury for the amniotic fluid it's called amniotic fluid sorry for the handwriting they're saying the area of the retina which contains the highest concentration of the cones it's called yellow spot yeah, that is that part of the uh, of the retina. Then they're saying that both A and B are matching columns. Plant hormone that inhibits, it inhibits, it makes the growth not possible. Ne? The, 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 the germination not possible. Inhibits. So the answer is Z. This one promotes germination, while this one inhibits. That's why this one is works in summer, this one works in winter. So the answer is B. The functional connection between two successful neurons, connection between two successful uh, uh, or consecutive uh, neurons, we call it uh, synapse. Synapse. Yes. So it means that the answer here, how do you write A? No, 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 no. B only. And then here, A only. Hormone that stimulates puberty. Testosterone in male, oestrogen in female. So the answer is both A and B. And B. Yes. Then they are saying that um, diagram below shows the condition of the eye for different light intensities when viewing the same object. Uh -huh. You are viewing the same object. Give the letter give the letter name of the part, the one, the letter, and the name. So if they want the letter and the name, so what is it? Of the part that contains uh, uh, muscles. Contains muscles. Uh, which muscles are they uh, talking about? About the sutura and the radio muscles. So in this case, um, it's going to be the B, which is the iris. So the answer is gonna be B. Mm, sorry, answer is gonna be B, and answer is iris. That is made up of the tough white fiber tissues. White fiber tissues is gonna be A, which is scara. Then they are saying that uh, diagram one two three represents the eye of the person. Okay. Uh, what are they saying? In very bright light. If it is very bright light, it means that you're supposed to look for that one which has the smallest pupil. So this, this, if I say diagram one versus diagram three, this is bright, this is dim. But now, if 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 I'm comparing one and two. 
this one is gonna be bright this one is gonna be dim meaning that the bright if you are talking about the most bright light is gonna be diagram two so the answer is gonna be um diagram two what they're saying diagram so the answer is two diagram you write the word diagram two where roads are stimulated the most where roads are stimulated the most remember roads they work under dim or under dark conditions so it means that they are they adapted to work in dim light or in dark light the dark, dark 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 areas or dark environment or conditions so it means that diagram three because of the pupil widening a lot or what uh, opening widely so to allow more light to enter so the answer is going to be diagram three which of the which muscles are mm -hmm, I'm saying which muscles are contracted in diagram two in diagram two if you look at diagram two you'll find out that this one uh is bright light and remember in bright light we said r with r c with c radio muscles contract saturated muscles radio muscles relax saturated muscles contract so it means that the answer for this is going to be uh satu satula muscles muscles so saturated muscles are the one which contracted and diagram three diagram three is the is the dim light so in 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 dim light we know that r goes with the c c goes with r so they are looking for muscles which are which have relaxed not contracted radio muscles contract such muscles relax so it means that it's going to be the same answer circular muscles yeah i think uh you have got it so now we can go to um tomorrow tomorrow i'll be uh uh releasing the uh the, the, the discussion of, of 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 paper two discussion of what of paper two. preparation for your uh for an exam if you're gonna write uh soon on monday yeah so um please um keep time around uh three o'clock tomorrow and then also on sunday three o'clock i'll be releasing uh discussions for paper two and it will be those who want to have uh questions if you have any question me to help you i'll be live i'll be able to help you and answer that all right let's go let's continue to question 1.5 diagram below shows um the interaction between two endocrine glands then they are saying that name the type of interaction that occurs between hormone a and b hormone a hormone a and hormone b and gland b uh, what what hormone what does this hormone do on gland b basically this is stimulation yes you'll find out that this one stimulates the gland therefore you'll find out that if uh, this hormone is not there what is going to happen is the negative feedback mechanism it brings about the negative feedback mechanism so uh basically uh, uh the, the the stimulation this one is either stimulated high or it is stimulated low based on the amount of hormone which is being produced then they are saying that uh, identify gland b if you look at gland b if you look at gland b gland b is the mm, thyroid gland this is a thyroid gland yes thyroid gland and then uh gland hormone a hormone a because it is coming from the hypophysis of pyrrhal gland to stimulate the thyroid gland therefore it's going to become thyroid uh sorry uh, it's going to become thyroid stimulating hormone it's going to become thyroid stimulating hormone so that is the answer for a and then hormone c 
is going to become a thyroxine. Yeah, so it's going to become thyroxine because the thyroid gland will produce the uh, thyroxine after thyroid smelting hormone is released uh, to the blood so that now this thyroid smelting hormone can stimulate the thyroid gland to produce more hormone C, which is thyroxine, or produce less hormone C, uh, still, which is thyroxine. They're saying that name the disorder as a result of gland B over stimulated and become enlarged. So basically, if you over um, secrete uh, hormone C, then you're going to have what you call the hyperthyroidism. But that's not what they are looking for. What they're looking for are results when B is uh, overstimulated and enlarged. So when the, it enlarges, then it becomes what you call a uh, goita. It's what you call what? Um, goita. So the answer here is going to be go eater. Uh, mind about the spelling because many people don't know how to write goitra or goita. Um, then they're saying that which hormone AOC will be exposed to, will be expected to be high in blood of the person when this order is mentioned. Uh, when, 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 when this order is happening uh, of enlargement of the thyroid gland, the thyroid gland is over stimulated. It means that it means that it's gonna produce more hormone C. So, what is the name of that hormone? The hormone is thyroxine, which we mentioned it here is thyroxine. It means that it's, you're gonna have over secretion of thyroxine, and then you're gonna have the the, the effects of thyroxine. What is AA? Is the um, uh, A is the uh, vas de, uh, seminal vesicle, B is the prostate gland, uh, so it's supposed to be corpus gland, and then this is urethra, and then this is the testis. Now they're saying, identified part A, we have seen it as seminal, seminal vescos. The seminal vesco, state one function of D. D is the urethra which transmits, uh, transports semen, semen, eh, to the vagina. Uh, there are them two reasons why structure B is not uh, considered to be an endocrine uh, gland. Structure B is not endocrine, no. Structure B, uh, prostate gland is exocrine. Why? Because it secretes substances direct to where they are needed. Because this this alkaline fluid which is being produced, uh, alkaline alkaline fluid is needed in the urethra and the vagina. Therefore, the prostate gland releases that alkaline fluid to, to where it is needed. Yes, where it is needed. Therefore, it does not need to be transported in 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 in, in blood. Hence, it can't be uh, endocrine. So it is exocrine. And remember that endocrine gland basically what it secretes is 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 is, is basically hormones. Yes, endocrine glands they basically produce hormones. And then uh, the secretion which is being secreted here they are not hormones. Yes, they are not hormones. So those are basically two answers whereby secret substances direct to where they are needed, and then also the kind of secretion which is being produced. And these are not what? These are not hormones. Name two, name the type of gametogenesis which occurs in C. Since it is male, then it's going to become spermatogenesis. Yeah, then they're saying explain the, uh, the secretion of A or and B, improve the chances of chances of fertilization. A is seminal vesco, and then B is prostate gland. Then you have to tell us the function of the secretion, whereby A, you tell us that A, uh, sorry, uh, A is what? A is, we say that A is, is seminal vesco and then produce nutrients. Nutrients, and what is the function of these nutrients? The fructose, because fructose is to uh, provide energy, yes, to the sperms. Yes, so these nutrients, they help, it is sugars. Yeah, basically provide, provide energy, energy, 
energy energy to the sperms so that they can swim across yeah across the indian ocean don't say indian ocean exam uh, across the uh the the vaginal to the fallopian tube so they must have this energy but this energy is being uh the nutrients they use they, they being uh, supplied by structure a which is this amino vesicle and then um so that now fertilization can take place then b is the uh, we say that b what is b let me check b is the prostate gland and then prostate gland the function of prostate gland b is prostate gland and the function of prostate gland yes is to provide alkaline ne, alkaline fluid which 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 uh neutralize the acidity acidity of the vagina yeah the acidity of the vagina yeah basically that's what you need just there is the function of that hormone sorry not hormone that fluid which is being released uh to the body then they are saying that 2.2 um, what is A is acrosome, acrosome B, what is B? A is acrosome, B is the nucleus, C is middle piece, basically is mitochondria. But now this one has no acrosome. So it becomes an abnormal. Two, the tail is too short, supposed to be long, so that provide enough propulsion force. Anyway, let's say identify A, we have seen it, acrosome, describe how the B, the role of B. During fertilization, what is B? The function of B is to provide the genetic material uh, uh, during for, for, for inheritance. Yeah. So without B, actually, uh, the sperm is useless. Yes. So it provides that genetic material for the uh, for inheritance characteristics you obtain from the father. Explain the role uh, of the organelle found in numerous in C. C is mitochondria, therefore, basically, is the function of it is to provide what is to provide energy. Energy. Uh, the major function is to provide energy. So those those organelles mention them, and you tell us the mitochondria, which provide energy for the sperm to move or to swim. Name two the two functions why sperm one is structurally better than um better for better ad suited or adapted for fertilization sperm one so basically what well, if you look at it yes it has the acrosome acrosome which digest digest so you have to see that acrosome which digest the membrane the membrane of the ovum ovum during fertilization that's number one this one has no uh this one has yes acrosome this one has no acrosome and then uh, this one the long tail long flagellum what is the function of it is to provide enough propulsion force this one yes provide the propulsion force but it's not enough therefore this one provides so you have to do a compulsion there it's, both they have the tail but one tail is long and big so that it can beat, provide enough propulsion force, and then now the sperm can swim a great distance and reach the ovum so that fertilization can take place. Hence, uh, sperm one is better adapted to carry out fertilization. Uh, here is the graph of two hormones. Uh, if you look at the hormone, which uh, is increasing on day 14, uh, definitely, we are talking about uh, we are talking about luteinizing hormone. Therefore, I will call this luteinizing hormone and the hormone which increases immediately. Yes, it increases just uh, when the the, the 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 ovarian cycle when the menstrual cycle has just completed is the FSH. All right, they are saying that. Explain state two functions of B. B uh triggers it triggers triggers ovulation that's number one number two stimulates the conversion of empty graphene follicle to corpus loreum 
simulates the conversion of empty graphene follicle to corpus lorium. And then they are saying that, explain why female who is struggling to get pregnant, uh, but one may be, uh, may be given pills containing A. Why A? Let me check and see what are they saying A. Oh, A. Remember, A is follicosmating hormone. So what's the function of follicosmating hormone? Yes, what's the function of follicosmating hormone? The function of follicosmating hormone is to stimulate, stimulate, stimulate the, uh, the, the, the graphene follicle to produce ovum. So if you give this pill to a person who is, is struggling for pregnancy, now it means that now this individual will be able to produce ovum and then uh, if sex happens, then automatically this person can 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 become pregnant, and then we'll have. So uh, it it stimulates the graphene follicle to produce what to produce um, ovum. Then I think we'll have the we'll we'll have high level of B constantly monitored. B is luteinizing hormone. So now, luteinizing hormone, when luteinizing hormone is high, it means that there are high chances of ovulation to take place. So luteinizing hormone triggers ovulation. Yes, ovulation. So why do we monitor it so that we know the days ovulation might take place? So if the, 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 the levels are high for luteinizing hormone, it means that there will be high chances of ovulation to take place. So that to identify or to... to to predict the, the, the prediction prediction of of days of days of of you lesion because this luteinizing hormone the moment is high we expect ovulation to take place explain how the level of a on day zero to five will differ from pregnant person so if you are looking at this so you tell us exactly what happens the person is pregnant automatically no new ovum is needed for the level of FSH or A is going to be low. It's going to be low. Why? Because uh, the person is pregnant. So progesterone is going to prevent the production of oligosomatic hormone. And then if it is prevented, it, therefore no new ovum will be produced. That's why now the level must be low. Then I think describe the role of ovarian hormones and their roles in the menstrual cycle here there are two hormones which are involved in ovarian in ovarian cycle the first hormone is ostro estrogen now you tell us how about estrogen the second hormone is progesterone so estrogen um prepares the uterus for implantation. Implantation. How? By making the endometrium, by making the uterus thick, fascicular, and glandular. Thick, fascicular, and glandular. What about this? This one maintains maintains pregnancy. How? By making the endometrium endometrium more thick, more fascicular, and more granular. You need to see the word more, more, more thick more vascular, and more granular. So basically, that's what they want. Um, now, 
look at um this now look at this you have luteinizing hormone you have luteinizing hormone luteinizing hormone uh luteinizing hormone luteinizing hormone what is the function of luteinizing hormone the function of luteinizing hormone is the first one we said is triggers uh triggers ovulation triggers ovulation sorry uh the function is to trigger ovulation luteinizing hormone triggers of you relation yes and then also uh, another function is is to change to stimulate the conversion of stimulate the conversion conversion of empty graphene follicle to corpus gloriam and then you have fsh the function of FSH is to change, or it is to the way you, you hear the, the, the name, which is follicle-stimulating hormone. The hormone, the hormone, which stimulates the development of the graphene follicle. And then now the graphene follicle can produce oestrogen, and then the graphene follicle can produce oestrogen, then oestrogen is going to make uh, is going to make uh, the preparation of the uterus. And then the progesterone is going to make the preparation if the individual is is is, is pregnant, is going to maintain this pregnancy. Now, the reason why I've given you this is to show you where students are going to make a mistake and where you are, you are supposed to write. In this question, they are saying, describe the secretion of the ovarian hormones and their role in the menstrual cycle. What are you focusing on? Um, so what I'm saying is, Yes, here you have these hormones. Yeah. You have these hormones. Yeah. These two hormones. And you also have these two hormones. Check the question very well. The question is saying, describe the secretions of the ovarian hormones. The secretions of the ovarian hormones. Meaning that, the secretion of the ovarian hormones. What do ovaries produce? Not ovarian cycle. No. If it is ovarian cycle, then you talk about this. Yes? How is the luteinizing hormone affect the ovary? Because that is how is the ovary changes under the influence of these hormones. But now they are looking there for ovarian hormones. The hormones ovaries produce. So that is the question. Meaning that they're not looking for the ovarian cycle. They are looking for the ovaries hormones produced. So the ovaries, you have two parts. That is the corpus, lorium, and the graphene follicle so oestrogen will produce the it will be produced by the graphene follicle while progesterone is going to be produced by lorenize sorry by corpus lorium so what are the secretions which hormones are these is oestrogen and progesterone and what are the effects these are the effects or the role they play in the menstrual cycle so those who wrote this this is not the Right answer is the correct answer. I was trying to show you what. Number two. Let me give you give you a clue on this. Do you think they can 
ask you it's the two functions of b of which b is the luteinizing hormone yes and they ask you again here the function of luteinizing hormone no they can't so we can't ask you one question in two if that happens then the question paper becomes vague of which we cannot allow that to happen anyway uh let's go to the second last question uh, of this C subsection. They are saying that Ankovi is the type of fish found in the Pacific Ocean. During the breeding season, the female and male uh, gather in large groups and release over and the semen into water. Once fertilized, the eggs float in the water and embryonic development occurs until hatching. The northern pike fish is found mainly in rivers during the breeding season. The female releases thousands of ova and then the male releases semen all over around the body or all, all around the, 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 the female. The fertilized eggs attach to the vegetation near the riverbed where embryonic development occurs until hatching. The graph below shows the survival rate of both species or fish species. Name the type of fertilization which occurs. Since the sperms are released outside, therefore, it becomes external fertilization. So the answer here becomes external Fertilization. Yes. Explain both fish are uh, oviparous. Why are they both oviparous? Remember, oviparous, those are animals which lay eggs and the development is outside. Therefore, is because they lay eggs, they lay eggs, lay eggs, and then development, and then development, development is outside the female's body. And then they're saying that describe two ways in which the chance of paralyzation uh, increased, uh, increased in northern uh, pike fish. Here, what are you looking for? Really? Stay, describe two ways in which. So you have to go back and see what did they do so that the chances of survival, chances of paralyzation uh, is there. First of all, they say that the northern uh, pike fish is found mainly in river. Ne? Two ways in which the chance of fertilization are increased in northern pike. So it's found in the river. So, okay, tell us. During breeding season, what happens? How do they increase the chance of uh, fertilization? The female will lay, release eggs, thousands, meaning that they produce large number of eggs, thousands of eggs. What about the, it means that there will be chances of sterilization. And then what about the male? The male doesn't just release eggs and go, but it releases, sorry, sperms and go. It releases the semen. This semen is released. Yeah? The semen is released, check, all, all around the female. It released all around the what? All around the female. Yeah, so it means that it increases the chances of, so, producing thousands of uh, eggs or, or over and also males um, releasing sperms or semens around the body of the female. Uh, those are the two uh, two ways in which fertilization is increased. Which graph XY represents the survival rate of the northern uh, pike? Remember, the higher the graph, if the graph is on top, it means that there, there will be high chances of survival. Because they're saying survival rate of embryo over 50 years. So it means that X will be the answer for that. Explain your answer. Explain, explain, because they say that the graph Y is X or Y represents the survival rate of the, yes. So how are you going to explain uh, that Y is the, because uh, X is the one which is the, uh, for northern pike. So in this case, it's because of the rate of survival. 
when they are still at the same time, they have the same number. But as time goes on, in terms of days, there will be more of Y which are dying than those of X. And then if you look at this, the, 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 at the day 50, it shows that fewer number of Y reach maturity, while more number of X reach maturity. So it shows that X is the one which has a high rate of survival. And also, you see that fertilized eggs attach the vegetation near the river bed where embryonic development occurs. It means that it's, it's, it's a little bit protected. It's not being uh, released and then you go. Check here. Once fertilized eggs float water, the embryonic development occurs. So if they're just floating in water, so predators are able to find those eggs easily. Therefore, these ones, they're not um, being protected at all. At least this one, they're in one place. And then... They're under the river bed, down, 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 down the river. So it means that it prevents um, some predators from reaching this. Therefore, they reach maturity at least compared to um, Y. Then let's go to uh, question two. They're saying that you, land, you have high blood. Uh, you have high blood glucose and then low blood glucose. Automatically, once you look at glucose, you start to think about of insulin and, and gluca, glucagon. So because high blood glucose, automatically this one becomes uh, this one becomes insulin. And then the gland obviously becomes pancreas. Yes. And then this one becomes glue. Glucagon, and then this one becomes again pancreas. Gland A, pancreas. Hormon C, glucagon, because it's about low, so it, we need it to rise again. Certain disorder caused by decrease in production of B. B, yes, it is e, diabetes. Diabetes. Mellitus. Diabetes mellitus. Don't just say diabetes. It must be diabetes mellitus. Explain how the effect of blood sugar um, levels. Explain how this will affect the blood sugar levels. Um, this order decrease in pr uh, production of hormone B. Uh, if 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 you eat uh, food food with sugars, this the individual the the, the blood sugar will increase. It won't be controlled. Yes. The person will have high amount of will have high amount of blood sugar. Why? Because it is not being converted uh, from glucose to glycogen to be stored. Therefore, everything which is being uh, eaten from food will be uh, in the blood, and then the level of sugars will increase. So you have to tell us that um, there will be high increase in the blood sugar. Yes. Why? Because there is be less insulin, less insulin being produced, hence less stimulation of the conversion of this uh, glucose into glycogen. And then that leads to the high level of this uh, sugars in the blood. Name the disorder. We say that the disorder is diabetes mellitus. Scientists have been investigating the use of adrenaline as as the treatment for people who cannot produce uh, who cannot produce uh, gly uh, glucagon because they are saying hormone C. Explain why this treatment may work. Yes, the treatment may work. Why? Remember, glucagon stimulates the conversion of glycogen to glucose, and then now you have glucose in the blood. What about adrenaline? Adri, adri. Nolin, yes, in case of emergence, stimulates the conversion of glyco, glycogen to glucose. Yes, still in the muscle. So you see that still they work almost the same way. They work almost the 
the same way. That's why this adrenaline issue might work uh, in the same way as the glycogen. Let's go to the last question, and then we see how we can uh, answer this. We smash it. We smash it. Yeah, don't forget to join us on paper two uh, when you're doing our uh, preparation, uh, which you are going to write on Monday. We'll be there on Sunday, and also we'll start uh, Saturday until uh, Sunday, until Monday, 7 o'clock. Yes, before you go for your exam, meaning that you can revise with us at Thunder, a Duke, or M. Saidi. What is A? A is corpus callosum. B is uh, medulla oblongatus. B, A, A. A is corpus callosum. B, or B is this side, is spinal cord. C, medulla oblongata. Let's play. Why a person may die if part C is damaged? Remember, part C. What is the function of part C? It controls all voluntary actions. For example, breathing, heartbeat. Imagine your heart stops beating because the part of the brain which controls it is not there. Definitely, you might lead to, uh, it might lead to death. That's why you might die because it controls the involuntary actions like the heartbeat, breathing rate. Uh, yes, breathing. Ah, uh, part B is damaged. The person's lower back. Yes. Now, which, 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 what will happen? Identify part B. Part B, we say that it's a spinal cord. Explain why the person will have no control over the skeletal muscles. Means that that's the part which controls the skeletal muscles. But remember that um, skeletal muscles are being controlled by the, the is being controlled by, um, uh, by spinal nerves, spinal nerves. They require spinal nerves there, yes? However much, they, they also control, the, the being controlled by the brain, uh, but still, uh, there are some impulse which are being sent there. So now, if part B is damaged, it means that these spinal nerves, part B is the spinal cord. It means that all activities which are taking place with the, the spinal cord, with the spinal cord, then it will not be able to do that. Remember that the spinal cord, it brings the information which needs to be interpreted by the brain. It will pass through the spinal cord via the, spine, the spinal nerves. Now the spinal cord is damaged automatically. The, the spinal nerves, they won't have where to take this information. And then now what happens? The person cannot respond uh, because these nerves cannot work. Yes. Then they're saying that table, you have this table. Uh, what's happening in this table? They're saying the table shows the number of several brain injuries per thousand, okay, in different regions. Okay, you have this different region. Which region has the smallest number? This, these are just um, questions which are open. Yes, there is no science behind nothing. It's just anyone can answer in different versions. Which region has the smallest number of, these are the number of people who died? No, no, who suffered of brain injuries. So just look for the smallest number. So in this case, the smallest number is um, number of severe brain injury per thousand. You find out that is 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 Africa. Yes, it is what it is Africa. Mm. Yes. Explain why this data may not be accurate for the region named. We don't have enough equipment to detect. Not everybody who have brain. Injury is reported. How do they know that? Why is this? If you look at uh, this, you see that the, the countries which are more developed or continents which are more developed are the ones which have more and severe brain injuries. It means that they have enough equipment to detect. And then the poor ones, they have fewer. Does that make sense? 
yet the, the developed ones they have yes equipments they can treat they can do what but why is it that they have more it's because they try to detect while africa very few areas have or very few countries have these machines to detect the brain injuries hence that's why the data might not be uh, accurate yes not everybody who has a brain injury is being reported yes all right data below shows so we so we are going to draw a, a bar graph bar graph here i'm just going to give a hint uh, whereby here you draw you must have x-axis y-axis told you use the principle called id i i d which means independent dependent then i said principle x y which means that this one goes on the x axis this goes on the y axis as i told you that in most cases the first column is independent the second column usually is dependent that's it then you plot your bar graph make sure that these bars are equal in size just drawing a, a rough equal in size the space here must be equal the same size ne? title please give a title ne? yes it, you must include tell video shows the recorded number of so, uh, you know per thousand in the, so um bar graph showing showing the recorded until you reach the, the word yes then so it means that you put the x here and then you put the y here don't forget to put units if they are there and then still here and then make sure that the scale here is good maybe you can start from 500 600 700 it must be good interval ne? same interval yeah then you get all your marks in most cases what we mark is um type of graph caption x and y then you say plotting uh plotting yeah that, 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 that's where the, then scale yes scale so that's where the marks come from so if you didn't swap so they will always give conditions there uh -huh. the ear the last question uh last 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 second last ne? a is tympanic membrane b is semicircular canal c is cochlear d is of a round window okay the thing identify c c is equal clear you have said it and then function of d d it absorbs it absorbs this d absorbs excess pressure excess excess pressure from the inner ear or it releases excess pressure from the inner ear uh -huh. they're saying the receptor c is organ of corti organ of corti explain uh why building up of wax in a in a yes may result in temporary hearing loss it means that if you remove the wax then you'll be able to hear again so it means that when the wax is there wax wax will block block the transmission of the sound to tympanic membrane and then less sound will be received less wave and less will be transmitted hence you have hearing problem grommets a small device used to use the, uh, that allows the air to move into and out of the middle ear this prevents the pressure build uh -huh. all right explain how these grommets in treatment uh, of middle ear infection prevents hearing loss first of all when the fluid is released yes it it it, it makes the tympanic membrane known to have too much pressure on the other side of the tympanic membrane and then now it it, it gives the free the, the, the tympanic membrane can move in and out free movement so that it can create so it means that if grommet is there it gives that free movement so that it can create the pressure and then the pressure can what can can move uh, number two if 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 grommet is there yes remember grommets they, they they allow this pass to go through so if they ask you that explain how the use of grommet treat 
treatment in the middle ear, infection prevents this hearing loss. It means that it prevents the rupturing, the rupturing or the burst of the what? Of the tympanic membrane, and then you won't be, and, and then uh, you remain, you will be able to hear because the tympanic membrane did not rupture, did not break. Number two, middle ear infection causes this fluid to block the middle ear. A station tube automatically is blocked also. So if the pass or if that fluid is drained, therefore it means that even the station tube can equalize the pressure on the either side of the tympanic membrane and then the person will be able to hear. Lastly, if uh, the fluid is drained, it means that uh, the tympanic membrane and oscos they can transmit the impulse to the inner ear without any without any problem. Describe the how the receptor B receptor in B in part B, okay, um, involved in maintaining balance and when there is change in speed and direction. Here, what you need to know. Um, here, what you need to know is uh, describe the, which receptors are there. They are saying speed and direction. When you talk about speed and direction, speed and direction, this is we are talking about the cre cristae. Yes. The cristae. So these cristae, yes, they are very important in where are they found? In the ampulla ampulla uh yes change in speed and direction stimulates this uh crystal so you will get this stick for the crystal found in the ampulla and then the ampulla of the semicircular canal yes and then what happens this crystal will change will change will be stimulated and will convert the stimulus stimulus into into nerve impulse and then uh, what happens to nerve impulse the nerve impulse will be transmitted transmitted along auditory auditory nerve yes auditory nerve auditory nerve yes to which part of the brain so auditory nerve this can be a tick this can be a tick or to nerve to which part of the brain to serre bellum for interpretation to restore that balance. So the crystal in the ampulla stimulated, converts the stimulus to a nerve impulse, and the nerve impulse is um, transmitted along the auditory nerve to cerebrum for interpretation to restore balance. 3.4, they're saying, okay, wearing face mask, use the speed, um, I'm trying to be fast, because of the time wearing, okay, let's get mask. So you have to read all this and then find out what they want. As I told you that independent variable, read the first statement or the second statement, you'll find the independent and dependent variable always indicated there, as I told you. So this is the statement I'm talking about. Scientists investigated the effect of wearing mask on carbon dioxide level in the blood. So it means that the carbon dioxide level will depend on uh, the wearing of the what? The mask. So carbon dioxide becomes dependent and the mask wearing becomes independent. So I think that one we have got it. Then they are saying that state two factors which were taken into consideration when they are doing this in experiment or investigation. Uh, here they say that they obtained permission. Yeah, first of all, you have to get the permission, yes. But what did they put in in, 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 in in consideration? What are they looking? Which kind of individual were they looking at? Check. Obtain permission from 150 
healthy volunteers. 150. The always word healthy. It means that they will have to look at, they have to consider people who are healthy. So the health, see now, the health, the health of the participants or the volunteers. Number two, the age, because they say they had to consider the age. Age below or above 30, they don't take you. So those are some of the considerations they, they, they did before. It's not everybody. Set one reason why the results end in the investigation may be considered reliable. Why is it? Remember, reliability is to increase the sample size. But they're saying, we have to know the tense they have used. Explain one reason why the results at the end of this investigation may be considered. At the end of this investigation may be considered, uh, yes, it's because they used 150, 150 healthy volunteers, meaning that that's a big sample size. Yes, so don't say that increase the sample size. How? They used 150 volunteers. Then they are saying that, mm, um give one reason why the results are you know, okay and then explain the why scientists uh allowed three minutes interval uh for each phase the reason why they did that so that to explore the carbon dioxide which was uh, obtained during that experiment so that when a new uh phase or new yes phase is starting you know that that carbon dioxide we're gonna find there is gonna be the original carbon dioxide the breathing rate the heartbeat, they will go back to normal so that now it's like they're starting afresh. Give a reason why carbon dioxide level, carbon dioxide levels were measured at the beginning. The reason why we want to control, do the control experiment. So this act as a control, control experiment to see that the carbon dioxide which is being produced, it came from the mask issue, not uh, they have been producing this carbon dioxide. We have to see before and then after applying the mask or without a mask or uh, the activity. Describe the homeostatic control of carbon dioxide. Here, when you talk about, remember this, the only homeostasis which does not have a negative feedback mechanism, which does not have the other side, only has one side. So in this case, you have to talk about medulla. Medulla oblongata will, yes, will, will, will detect um, using its um, chemoreceptors, we will detect. And then once detect, it's gonna send the impulse to the heart. So medulla, you have to talk about medulla. Medulla, yes. And then the medulla will send the impulse to the heart. Then the heartbeat is gonna increase so that more blood is pumped to the lungs. The lungs, still the breathing rate is gonna increase. And then this is gonna expel carbon dioxide out of the body. Yeah, so basically that's what you need. Medulla is the heartbeat. Say so medulla sending the impulse to the heart. So medulla is going to detect the blood by help of the chemoreceptors. The blood carbon dioxide, is. it means that it's too much acidic because once carbon dioxide is there, once carbon dioxide is there, remember it has water there and then it forms carbonic acid. Uh, carbonic acid, sorry, this is chemistry, right? Yes. Uh, carbonic acid, this carbonic acid is, is the one, the ions, the, 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 the acidity of the blood is going to be high. And then they will know that carbon dioxide, yes, carbon dioxide is high in the blood. Therefore, medulla will, the, the impulse will be sent to the, uh, the, the, the medulla will, will, will detect with the help of chemoreceptors. The medulla will send the impulse to the heart and the heartbeat is going to increase, pushing more blood into the lungs. And then um, the lungs is the heart the, the breathing is gonna the breathing the depth and the rate of the breathing is also gonna increase expelling carbon dioxide from the body and then uh, the level of carbon dioxide will go back to normal in the blood lastly 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 uh -huh. this one is uh, an extract still this one you can answer uh not too much of uh, science. State two places where oxygens are being produced from the shoot and the tip, uh, from the shoot and the root. And then they are talking about state two ways in which oxygens increase the length of 
is the how do these auxins uh, increase the length of 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 of, of, of what of um, these plants basically auxins they increase by increasing the cell elongation or enlargement there will be a cell elongation actually growth is the length is cell enlargement and cell elongation and then growth will happen instead to other one other plant hormone that cause uh, uh that cause increase in the length of the stem this one is you talk about gibberellin you have to know the the the, 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 the spelling g b gibberellins yeah the gibberellins that is the answer it works together with the oxygen actually there is a direct effect of gibberellins on oxygen how oxygen work but we don't talk about it here yeah you will find it at the university explain how oxygen can be used to um to uh, be used in plants to plant propagation propagation to the advantage of the nature conservation remember when the plants maybe they have died or because of the disaster or something like that auxins yes we have seen that it stimulates the root check here they say that it stimulates the root auxins stimulates the root development in cutting so it means that what we do is we just do the cuttings of the stem of the roots and uh, um, cuttings of the stem and then or roots and then we go plant them once you plant them then automatically auxins is gonna stimulate this root developments in cutting you understand and then now the plant will grow again so each cutting will become a plant therefore it means that the nature will be conserved again if there was maybe a disaster or wildfire or deforestation which happened uh, yes so which we, we can plant these plants easily and then the conservation will come back to normal this marks the beginning of the end of the paper. I expect everyone to get 150 marks. The paper was cheap. Yeah. See you. Thank you for being with me. MCID as usual. Um, we are launching. A, a, we'll be helping students next year 24-7. Tell your friend. Tell your sister. Subscribe. MCID and Thunder Eduke, we will find help from there. And material will always be found at our website. Check the description. There will be a link in all our videos, which take you to the website or just type thundereduke.com. Um, You'll be able to get all the information you need. You can even ask questions, then we can help you. Please, if you want to get the answer on time, most especially, I'm talking about next year. Please ask on time so that we can have enough time to fix you in. Thank you very much. God bless you. Uh, let's discuss the question paper of 2022, uh, November. We see the memorandum. How uh, people perform the uh, in this paper. MCID, as usual. Download it from thundereduke.com. Check the link in the description below. Um, section A. Various options are provided. It means that you're supposed to look for A, B, C, D. Which one of the following maintains the shape of the eyeball? The eyeball is being maintained by vitreous humor. Uh, let me check the nice color to use. I love that. So is vitreous humor. Uh, let me check, let me check, sorry. Mm, yep. Um, yep. All right. Sorry for that. Eh? Just to confirm. 
if everything is working well, okay? The answer is C, cornea, no, lens, no. The shape is being maintained by vitreous humor. So there you get two marks. Then they're saying that the choroid dash uh, rich supply with blood vessels containing photoreceptors, like light, and impulse. No, the answer is uh, A, richly supplied with blood vessels. So two marks. I'm going through very fast, um, just a highlight of uh, this paper they have written uh, without explaining that too much. But uh, if I say that there is a need to explain a bit, I'll just do just a hint. Uh, they're saying that um, 1.3, which one of the following occurs immediately after fertilization? Um, when after fertilization, you form a zygote, which forms a morula, which forms a blastula, which forms the outer layer, which is called a uh, chorionic. Uh, chorion forms finger-like projection to form um, chorionic villi and then implantation. So uh, blastula can't be the first, can't, morula, yes, but it's not hollow. So it's out, blastula, no. So the answer is D, two marks. So morula is a solid ball of cells. Then you're saying that on hot day, uh, expect more sweat. Ne? Yeah. So you're saying that less blood vessel, no sweat gland become inactive. Inactive, no. Uh, blood, uh, more blood flow through the surface of the skin. Yes, vasoconstriction, no. So the answer is C. So you get two marks here. Then they're saying that um, the normal shape, uh, sorry, the normal site where fertilization occurs in a female is uterus no over no vagina no fallopian tube yes get two marks there so it means that on that first page you're supposed to get 10. Uh, then you're saying that a uh, 1.6 which one of the following is best describes the event of uh accommodation when a person is um when a person is viewing the object which is Less than six mirrors. Less than six mirrors, it means that uh, this is a near vision. Yes, if it's less than six meters, uh, remember in near vision, the lens must become more convex. And then the suspensor ligament must slacken. So let's look at uh, slackening. So it means that the answer may either be this or this. So this one is out now, this one is out. And then they're saying that uh, ciliary muscles must um, must be, they must contract because they work antagonistically. This lacans, the other one must contract. Therefore, the answer is B. Mm. So this one, it means this one is wrong. Uh -huh. They're saying that um, the axon, so this is a sensory neuron. The axon, is represented by the structure the axon axon means the part of the of the in, uh, neuron which takes impulse away from the cell body so if the this is the cell body so this is what you call the axon so the answer is going to be number four so number four you get two marks there again then they are saying that um, which one of the following levels affect uh, the speed of impulse, transmission of impulse, the speed is being affected by the myelin sheath, is acting as an insulator. So in this case, if you look at this diagram, you'll find out that the myelin sheath is this, which is number three. Therefore, the answer here is going to be this. Then they are saying that... Um, this 1.1.9 up to 1.110 uh, procedure so as, as follow. So they're saying that the far to the diagram below uh, that shows the investigation done to determine the effect of auxins on tropism. Uh, this is the procedure. They're saying the potted plant placed in horizontal uh, clonostat. Clonostat is this machine which rotates. Then the plant was exposed to light from all directions meaning that your photo, photo, phototropism will not affect. Uh, growth was observed after a few days. So how did it grow? Number one, they are saying that which one of the following is an explanation of the results? 
okay for uh, tropism because you no know, we said that for tropism we don't affect so whenever there is for tropism we cancel it out so the answer might be this or this but they're saying that your tropism cause the auxins to move downwards because it is horizontally uh, look if horizontally if auxins are here at the tip yes they will be pulled downwards yes due to gravity so we will have much concentration of auxins this side and then if you have much concentration of this auxin this side the lower side will grow faster than the upper side and then it will grow like that but because the light was distributed equally so what caused this to bend is the basically due to gravity, which is the uh, geotropism. Therefore, the answer, geotropism occurs because oxygens move downwards. So the answer becomes B. So this one becomes wrong. I think that um, control for the same investigation was set up uh, by putting the identical hot plant uh, on a rotating kilonostat. So the kilonostat now is rotating. It means that it will bring about equal distribution of oxygens. So oxygens, uh, in this case, will be equally distributed, and then there will be no effect. So uh, they are saying that no, there will be no growth will be there. Stem will go upward. No, stem will grow down. Stem will grow horizontally. It means that the stem will come. Uh, just uh, sorry for just a small um um delay there. There were some technical issues. All right, I was saying that um this causes the the stem will grow horizontally. Why? Because this clinostat, the clinostat will rotate. As this clinostat rotates, yes, the oxygens will be distributed equally, and then now the the, the 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 at a certain time t let me just say at a certain time t uh, so that now every part will receive the auxins equally at a certain time t and then now the growth will be equally and then now it will grow horizontally instead of bending so let's go to the biological terms so now it means that you are supposed to get 10 marks plus 10 marks which is 20 marks Hmm. Uh, biological terms, the part of the skull which uh, protects the, the brain, say that is called the cranium. Yes, it's called the cranium. Homeostasis process whereby temperature is controlled by the body. Thermal regulation. And then there's a visual defect caused by cloudy. Cloudy is cataracts. Saying that the blood vessel which transports deoxygenated blood from the fetus. If it's from the fetus, it means that from the heart towards the other parts of the body, which is the placenta. So since it's from the heart, therefore it's going to have the word artery. And then since we are talking about the baby, then it's going to become umbilical, umbilical. Artery, umbilical artery. Then they are saying that the part of the brain which controls temperature is hypothalamus. Then they are saying that the branch of the nervous system that is made up of spinal and cranial nerves is called this, since it is it's not if not the center, then it's on sides, which is the peri. Perifera nervous system. You complete it. Yes, a finger like projection, which is developed uh, outer membrane of the embryo. So remember that you have the hollow ball of cells, have a hollow ball of cells. This hollow ball of cells, it forms outer layer, which forms finger like projection. Outer layer is called chorion, finger like projection because it's coming from the chorion. So it becomes the villus. The villi of the chorion, hence chorionic villi. So it's gonna be answer is gonna be 
chorionic villi. Yes. Let us say the hormone that regulates the salt in the body is aldosterone. They say the fruit that protects the developing fetus against mechanical injury for the amniotic fluid. It's called amniotic fluid. Sorry for the handwriting. They're saying the area of the retina which contains the highest concentration of the cones. It's called yellow spot. Yeah, that is that part of the uh, of the retina. Then they're saying that both A and B or matching columns. Plant hormone that inhibits, it inhibits. It makes the growth not possible. Ne? The, 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 the germination not possible. Inhibits. So the answer is this one promotes germination. Well, this one inhibits. That's why this one is works in summer, this one works in winter. So the answer is B. The functional connection between two successful neurons, connection between two successful uh, uh, or consecutive uh, neurons, we call it uh, synapse. Synapse. Yes. So it means that the answer here, how do you write A? No, 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 no. B only. And then here, A only. Hormone that stimulates puberty. Testosterone in male, oestrogen in female. So the answer is both A and B. And B. Yes. Then they are saying that um, diagram below shows the condition of the eye for different light intensities when viewing the same object. Uh -huh. You are viewing the same object. Give the letter, give the letter name of the part, the one, the letter, and the name. So if they want the letter and the name, so what is it? Of the part that contains uh, uh, muscles, contains muscles. Uh, which muscles are they uh, talking about? About the sutura and the radio muscles. So in this case, um, it's going to be the B, which is the iris. So the answer is going to be B. Um, sorry. Answer is going to be B, and the answer is iris. That is made up of the tough white fiber tissues. White fiber tissues is going to be A, which is Scara. Then they are saying that uh, diagram one, two, three represents the eye of the person. Okay. Uh, what are they saying? In very bright light. If it is very bright light, it means that you're supposed to look for that one which has the smallest pupil. So this, this if I say diagram one versus diagram three, this is bright, this is dim. But now, if 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 I'm comparing one and two, this one is gonna be bright. This one is gonna be dim, meaning that the bright. If we are talking about the most bright light, is gonna be diagram two. So the answer is gonna be. Um, diagram two. What they are saying? Diagram. So the answer is two. Diagram. You write the word diagram two. Where rods are stimulated the most. Where rods are stimulated the most. Remember, rods they work under dim or under dark conditions. So it means that. They are they're adapted to work in dim light or in dark light, dark, 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 dark areas or dark environment or conditions. So it means that diagram three, because of the pupil widening a lot or what, uh, opening widely, so to allow more light to enter. So the answer is going to be diagram three. Which of the, which muscles are, mm -hmm, they're saying which muscles are, Contracted in diagram two. In diagram two, if you look at diagram two, you'll find out that this one, 
uh, is brahlite. And remember, in brahlite, we said R with R, C with C. Radio muscles contract, sacral muscles. Radio muscles relax, sacral muscles contract. So it means that the answer for this is going to be uh, sacral muscles. Muscles. So sacral muscles are the one which contracted. And diagram three, diagram three is the, is the dim light. So in, in, in dim light, we know that R goes with the C, C goes with R. So they are looking for muscles which are which have relaxed, not contracted. Radio muscles contract, sacral muscles relax. So it means that it's gonna be the same answer, circular muscles. Yeah, I think uh, you have got it. So now we can go to um, tomorrow. Tomorrow I'll be uh, uh, releasing the, uh, the, the the discussion of 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 paper two. Discussion of what? Of paper two. preparation for your uh, final exam. If you wanna write uh, soon on Monday. Yeah. So um, please. Um, Keep time around uh, 3 o'clock tomorrow. And then also on Sunday, 3 o'clock, uh, I'll be releasing uh, discussions for paper two. And it will be those who want to have uh, questions. If you have any question, me to help you. I'll be live. I'll be able to help you and answer that. All right, let's go. Let's continue to question 1.5. Diagram below shows um, the interaction between two endocrine glands. Then they are saying that, name the type of interaction that occurs between hormone A and B. Hormone A. Hormone A and hormone B and gland B. Uh, what, what hormone, what does this hormone do on gland B? Basically, this is stimulation. Yes, you'll find out that this one stimulates the gland. Therefore, you'll find out that if uh, this hormone is not there, what is going to happen is the negative feedback mechanism. It brings about the negative feedback mechanism. So uh, basically, uh, uh, the, the, the stimulation, this one is either stimulated high or it is stimulated low based on the amount of hormone which is being produced. Then they are saying that uh, identify gland B. If you look at gland B, if you look at gland B, gland B is the mm, thyroid gland. This is a thyroid gland. Yes. Thyroid gland. And then uh, gland hormone A. Hormone A. Because it is coming from the hypophysis of pyrrhic gland. To stimulate the thyroid gland, therefore it's gonna become thyroid. Uh, sorry, uh, it's gonna become thyroid stimulating hormone. It's gonna become thyroid stimulating hormone. So that is the answer for A. And then hormone C is gonna become a uh, thyroxine. Yeah, so it's gonna become thyroxine because the thyroid gland will produce the uh, thyroxine after thyroid smitting hormone is released uh, to the blood so that now this thyroid smitting hormone can stimulate the thyroid gland to produce more hormone C which is thyroxine or produce less hormone C uh, still which is thyroxine. They're saying that name the disorder as a result of gland B over stimulated and become enlarged. So basically, if you over um, secrete uh, hormone C, then you're gonna have what you call the hyperthyroidism. But that's not what they are looking for. What they're looking for uh, results when B is uh, overstimulated and enlarged. So when the, it enlarges, then it becomes what you call uh, goita. It's what you call what? Um, goita. So the answer here is going to be go eat. Yeah, mind about the spelling because many people don't know how to write go eat or go eat um, Then I think that which hormone A or C will be exposed to, will be expected to be high in blood of 
the person when this order is mentioned by is uh when 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 this order is happening uh, of enlargement of the thyroid gland the thyroid gland is over stimulated it means that it means that it's going to produce more hormone c so what is the name of that hormone the hormone is thyroxine which we mentioned it here is thyroxine it means that it's, you're going to have over secretion of thyroxine and then you're going to have the, the the effects of thyroxine what is aa is the um, uh, a is the uh, vas de, uh seminal vesicle b is the prostate gland uh so it's supposed to be corpus gland and then this is urethra and then this is the testis now they're saying identified part a we have seen it as seminal seminal vesicles the seminal vesicle now, state one function of D. D is the urethra which transmits, uh, transports semen, semen, eh, to the vagina. Uh, there are name two reasons why structure B is not uh, considered to be an endocrine uh, gland. Structure B is not endocrine. No, structure B, uh, prostate gland is exocrine. Why? Because it secretes substances direct where they are needed because this this alkaline fluid which is being produced uh alkaline alkaline fluid is needed in the urethra and the vagina therefore the prostate gland releases that alkaline fluid to, to to where it is needed yes where it is needed therefore it does not need to be transported in 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 in, in blood hence it can't be uh, endocrine so it is exocrine and remember that endocrine gland basically what it secretes is 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 is, is basically hormones yes endocrine glands they basically produce hormones and then uh the secretion which is being secreted here they are not hormones yes they are not hormones so those are basically two answers whereby secret substances direct to where they are needed and then also the kind of secretion which is being produced. And these are not what? These are not hormones. Name two, name the type of gametogenesis which occurs in C. Since it is male, then it's going to become spermatogenesis. Yeah, then they're saying explain the, uh, the secretion of A o and B, improve the chances of, chances of fertilization. A is seminal vesco, and then B is prostate gland. Then you have to tell us the function of their secretion. Whereby A, you tell us that A, uh, sorry, uh, A is what? A is, we say that A is, is seminal vesco, and then produce nutrients. Nutrients, and what is the function of these nutrients? The fructose. Because fructose is to uh, provide energy. Yes, to the sperms. Yes, so these nutrients they help. It is sugars. Yeah, basically provide provide energy, 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 energy to the sperms so that they can swim across. Yeah, across the Indian Ocean. Don't say Indian Ocean. Exam uh, across the uh the the vagina to the fallopian tube. So they must have this energy. But this energy is being uh the nutrients they use. They, they being uh, supplied by structure A, which is this seminal vesco. And then, um, so that now fertilization can take place. Then B is, the, uh, we say that B, what is B? Let me check. B is the prostate gland. And then prostate gland, the function of prostate gland, B is prostate gland. And the function of prostate gland, Yes, is to provide alkaline, ne, alkaline fluid, which, 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 uh, neutralize the acidity, acidity of the vagina. Yeah, the acidity of the vagina. Yeah, basically, that's what you need. Just there is the function of that hormone. Sorry, not hormone, that a fluid which is being released uh, to the body. Then they are saying that 2.2 uh, 
Um, what is A is acrosome, acrosome B, what is B? A is acrosome, B is the nucleus, C is middle piece, basically is mitochondria. But now this one has no acrosome. So it becomes an abnormal. Two, the tail is too short. It's supposed to be long so that it provides enough propulsion force. Anyway, let's say identify A. We have seen it. Acrosome describe how the B, the role of B during fertilization. What is B? The function of B is to provide the genetic material uh, uh, during for, for, for inheritance. Yeah. So without B, actually, uh, the sperm is useless. Yes, so it provides that genetic material for the uh, for inheritance characteristics you obtain from the father. Explain the role uh, of the organelle found in numerous in C. C is mitochondria. Therefore, basically, is the function of it is to provide what is to provide energy. Energy. Uh, the major function is to provide. Energy. So those those organelles mention them, and you tell us the mitochondria, which provide energy for the sperm to move or to swim. Name two the two functions why sperm one is structurally better than um, better for better ad suited or adapted for fertilization. Sperm one. So basically, what if you look at it, yes. It has the acrosome, acrosome which digest, digest. So you have to see that acrosome which digest the membrane, the membrane of the ovum, ovum during fertilization. That's number one. This one has no, uh, this one has, yes, acrosome. This one has no acrosome. And then uh, this one, the long tail, long flagellum. What is the function of it is to provide enough propulsion force. This one, yes, provide the propulsion force, but it's not enough. Therefore, this one provides. So you have to do a compulsion there. It's, the both they have the tail, but one tail is long and big so that it can beat, provide enough propulsion force. And then now the sperm can swim a great distance and reach the ovum so that fertilization can take place. Hence, uh, sperm one is better adapted to cut out fertilization. Uh, here is the graph of two hormones. Uh, if you look at the hormone which uh, is increasing on day 14, uh, definitely we are talking about uh, we are talking about luteinizing hormone. Therefore, I'll call this luteinizing hormone and the hormone which increases immediately. Yes, it increases. Just uh, when the the, the 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 ovarian cycle, when the menstrual cycle has just completed, is FSH. All right, they are saying that. Explain state two functions of B. B uh, triggers it triggers triggers ovulation. That's number one. Number two stimulates the conversion of empty graphene follicle to Corpus lorium. Similarly, the conversion of empty graphene follicle to corpus lorium. And then they are saying that, explain why female who is struggling to get pregnant, uh, but one may be, uh, may be given pills containing A. Why A? Let me check and see. What are they saying? A. Oh, A. Remember, A is follicosmating hormone. So what's the function of follicosmating hormone? Yes, what's the function of follicosmating hormone? The function of follicosmating hormone is to stimulate, stimulate, stimulate the, uh, the, 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 the graphene follicle to produce ovum. So if you give this pill to a person who is, is struggling for pregnancy, now it means that now this individual will be able to produce ovum and then uh, if sex happens, then automatically this person can can can, can become pregnant, and then we'll have. So 
it, it stimulates the graphene follicle to produce what? To produce um, ovum. Then I think we'll have the, we'll, we'll have her level of B constantly monitored. B is luteinizing hormone. So now, luteinizing hormone, when luteinizing hormone is high, it means that there are high chances of ovulation to take place. So luteinizing hormone triggers ovulation. Yes, ovulation. So why do we monitor it? So that we know the days ovulation might take place. So if the, 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 the levels are high for luteinizing hormone, it means that there will be high chances of ovulation to take place. So that to identify or to, to, to predict the, the, the prediction prediction of of days of days of of you lesion because this luteinizing hormone the moment is high we expect ovulation to take place explain how the level of a on day zero to five will differ from pregnant person so if you are looking at this so you tell us exactly what happens the person is pregnant automatically no new ovum is needed therefore the level of f s h or A is going to be low. It's going to be low. Why? Because uh, the person is pregnant. So progesterone is going to prevent the production of oligosomating hormone. And then if it is prevented, it, therefore no new ovum will be produced. That's why now the level must be low. Then I think describe the role of ovarian hormones and their roles in the menstrual cycle. Here, there are two hormones which are involved in ovarian in ovarian cycle. The first hormone is ostro, estrogen. Now you tell us how about estrogen. The second hormone is progesterone. So estrogen um, prepares the uterus for implantation. Implantation. How? By making the endometrium, by making the uterus thick, vascular, and glandular. Glandular. Thick, vascular, and glandular. What about this? This one maintains maintains pregnancy how by making the endometrium endometrium more thick more vascular and more granular we need to see the word more 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 thick more vascular and more granular so basically that's what they want Um, now, look at um, this. Now, look at this. You have luteinizing hormone. You have luteinizing hormone, luteinizing hormone, uh, luteinizing hormone, luteinizing hormone. What is the function of luteinizing hormone? The function of luteinizing hormone is the first one we said is triggers, uh, triggers ovulation. Triggers ovulation. Sorry. Uh, the function is to trigger ovulation. Luteinizing hormone triggers ovulation. Yes. And then also... Uh, another function is is to change to stimulate the conversion of stimulate the conversion conversion of empty graphene follicle to corpus lorium. and then you have FSH. The function of FSH is to 
change or it is to the way you, you hear the, the name, which is folicostimating hormone. The hormone, the hormone which stimulates the development of the graphene follicle. And then now the graphene follicle can produce oestrogen and then the graphene follicle can produce oestrogen, then oestrogen is gonna make uh, is gonna make uh, the preparation of the uterus. And then the progesterone is gonna make the preparation if the individual is 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 the pregnant is gonna maintain this pregnancy. Now, the reason why I've given you this is to show you where students are gonna make a mistake and where you are you are supposed to write. In this question, they are saying describe the secretion of the ovarian hormones and their role in the menstrual cycle. What are you focusing on? Um, so what I'm saying is, yes, here you have these hormones. Yeah? You have these hormones. Yeah? These two hormones. And you also have these two hormones. Check the question very well. The question is saying, describe the secretions of the ovarian hormones. The secretions of the ovarian hormones. Meaning that the secretion of the ovarian hormones, what do ovaries produce? Not ovarian cycle. No. If it is ovarian cycle, then you talk about this. Yes? How is the luteinizing hormone affect the ovary? Because that is how is the ovary changes under the influence of these hormones. But now they are looking there for ovarian hormones. The hormones ovaries produce. So that is the question. Meaning that they're not looking for the ovarian cycle. They are looking for the ovaries hormones produced. So the ovaries, you have two parts. That is the corpus, lorium, and the graphene follicle. So oestrogen will produce the it will be produced by the graphene follicle, while progesterone is gonna be produced by lorinite, sorry, by corpus lorium. So what are the secretions? Which hormones are these? Is oestrogen and progesterone. And what are the effects? These are the effects or the role they play in the menstrual cycle. So those who wrote this, this is not the right answer. This is the correct answer. I was trying to show you what. Number two, let me give you, give you a clue on this. Do you think they can ask you the two functions of B, of which B is the luteinizing hormone? Yes. And they ask you again here the function of luteinizing hormone? No, they can't. So we can't ask you one question in two. If that happens, then the question paper comes vague, of which we cannot allow that to happen. Anyway, uh, let's go to the second last question uh, of this C subsection. They're saying that Ankovi is the type of fish found in the Pacific Ocean during the breeding season the female and male uh, gather in large groups and release over and the semen into water. Once fertilized, the eggs float in the water and the embryonic development occurs until hatching. The northern pike fish is found ma mainly in the rivers during the breeding season. The female releases thousands of ova and then the male releases 
semen all over around the body or all, all around the, 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 the female. The fertilized eggs attach to the vegetation near the riverbed where embryonic development occurs until hatching. The graph below shows the survival rate of both species or fish species. Name the type of fertilization which occurs. Since the sperms are released outside, therefore, it becomes external fertilization. So the answer here becomes external fertilization. Yes. Explain both fish are uh, oviparous. Why are they both oviparous? Remember, oviparous, those are animals which lay eggs and the development is outside. Therefore, is because they lay eggs, they lay eggs, lay eggs, and then development, and then development, development is outside a female's body. And then they're saying that describe two ways in which the chance of paralyzation uh, increased, uh, increased in northern uh, pike fish. Here, what are you looking for? Really? Stay, describe two ways in which. So you have to go back and see what did they do so that the chances of survival, chances of fertilization uh, is there. First of all, they say that the northern uh, pike fish is found mainly in river. Ne? Two ways in which the chance of fertilization are increased in northern pike. So it's found in the river. So, okay, tell us. During breeding season, what happens? How do they increase the chance of uh, fertilization? The female will lay, release eggs, thousands, meaning that they produce large number of eggs, thousands of eggs. What about the, it means that there will be uh, chances of fertilization. And then what about the male? The male doesn't just release eggs and go. But it releases, sorry, sperms and go. It releases the semen. This semen is released. Yeah? The semen is released, check, all, all around the female. It released all around the what? All around the female. Yeah, so it means that it increases the chances of, so producing thousands of uh, eggs or, or over and also males, um, Releasing sperms or semen around the body of the female. Uh, those are the two uh, two ways in which fertilization is increased. Which graph XY represents the survival rate of the northern uh, pike? Remember, the higher the graph, if the graph is on top, it means that the, there will be high chances of survival. Because they're saying survival rate of embryo over 50 years. So it means that X will be the answer for that. Explain your answer. Explain, explain, because they say that the graph Y is, X or Y represents the survival rate of the, yes, so how are you going to explain uh, that Y is the, because uh, X is the one which is the, uh, for Northern Pike. So in this case, it's because of the rate of survival. When they are still at the same time, they have the same number. But as time goes on, in terms of days, there will be more of Y which are dying than those of X. And then if you look at this, the, 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 at the day 50, it shows that fewer number of Y reach maturity, while more number of X Rich maturity. So it shows that X is the one which has a high rate of survival. And also, you see that fertilized eggs attach the vegetation near the riverbed where embryonic development occurs. It means that it's, it's, it's a little bit protected. It's not being uh, released and then you go. Check here. Once fertilized eggs float, water, the embryonic development occurs. So if they're just floating in water, so predators are able to find those eggs easily. Therefore, these ones, they're not um, being protected at all. At least this one, they're in one place and then they're under the river bed. Down, 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 down the river. So it means that it prevents 
um, some predators from reaching this. Therefore, they reach maturity at least compared to um, Y. Then let's go to uh, question two. They're saying that you have high blood. Uh, you have high blood glucose and then low blood glucose. Automatically, once you look at glucose, you start to think about of insulin and, and gluca, glucagon. So because high blood glucose, automatically this one becomes uh, this one becomes insulin. And then the gland of VSA becomes pancreas. Yes. And then this one becomes glue. Glucagon, and then this one becomes again pancreas. Gland A, pancreas. Hormone C, glucagon, because it's about low, so it, we need it to rise again. Certain so disorder caused by decrease in production of B. B, yes, it is e, diabetes. Diabetes. Mellitus. Diabetes mellitus. Let me just say diabetes. It must be diabetes made. Explain how the effect of blood sugar um, levels. Explain how this will affect the blood sugar levels. Um, this order decrease in pro uh, production of hormone B. Uh, if 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 you eat uh, food food with sugars, this the individual the, the the blood sugar will increase. It won't be controlled. Yes. The person will have high amount of will have high amount of blood sugar. Why? Because it is not being converted uh, from glucose to glycogen to be stored. Therefore, everything which is being uh, eaten from food will be uh, in the blood, and then the level of sugars will increase. So you have to tell us that um, there will be high increase in the blood sugar. Yes. Why? Because there is be less insulin, less insulin being produced, hence less stimulation of the conversion of this uh, glucose into glycogen. And then that leads to the high level of this uh, sugars in the blood. Name the disorder. We say that the disorder is diabetes mellitus. Scientists have been investigating the use of adrenaline as uh, as the treatment for people who cannot produce uh, who cannot produce uh, uh, glucagon because they are saying hormone C. Explain why this treatment may work. Yes, the treatment may work. Why? Remember, glucagon stimulates the conversion of glycogen to glucose, and then now you have glucose in the blood. What about adrenaline? Adri, adri. Noline, yes, in case of emergence, stimulates the conversion of glyco, glycogen to glucose. Yes, still in the muscle. So you see that still they work almost the same way. They work almost the, the same way. That's why this adrenaline issue might work uh, in the same way as the glycogen. Let's go to the last question. And then we see how we can uh, answer this. We smash it. We smash it. Yeah, don't forget to join us on paper two uh, when you're doing our uh, preparation, uh, which you are going to write on Monday. We'll be there on Sunday. And also we will start uh, Saturday until uh, Sunday, until Monday, 7 o'clock. Yes, before you go for your exam. Meaning that you can revise with us at Thunder a Duke or M. Saidi. What is A? A is corpus callosum. B is uh, medulla oblongatus. B, A, A. A is corpus callosum. B, or B is this side, is spinal cord. C, medulla oblongata. Explain why a person may die if part C is damaged. Remember, part C. What is the function of part C? It controls all voluntary actions. For example, breathing. Heartbeat. Imagine your heart stops beating because the part of the brain which controls it is not there. Definitely, you might lead to uh, 
it might lead to death. That's why you might die because it controls the involuntary actions like the heartbeat, breathing rate. That, yes, breathing. Ah, part B is damaged. The person's lower back. Yes. Now, which, 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 what will happen? Identify part B. Part B, we say that it's a spinal cord. Explain why the person will have no control over the skeletal muscles. It means that that's the part which controls the skeletal muscles. But remember that um, skeletal muscles are being controlled by the, the is being controlled by, um, uh, by spinal nerves, spinal nerves. They require spinal nerves there, yes? However much they, they also control, the, the being controlled by the brain, uh, but still uh, there are some impulse which are being sent there. So now if part B is damaged, it means that these spinal nerves, part B is the spinal cord. It means that all activities which are taking place with the, the spinal cord, with the spinal cord, then it will not be able to do that. Remember that the spinal cord, it brings the information which needs to be interpreted by the brain. It will pass through the spinal cord via the, spine, the spinal nerves. Now the spinal cord is damaged automatically. The, the spinal nerves, they won't have where to take this information. And then now what happens? The person cannot respond uh, because these nerves cannot work. Yes. Then they're saying that table, you have this table. Uh, what's happening in this table? They're saying the table really shows the number of several brain injuries per thousand, okay, in different regions. Okay, you have this different region. Which region has the smallest number? This, these are just um, questions which are open. Yes, there is no science behind nothing. It's just anyone can answer in different versions. Which region has the smallest number of, these are the number of people who died. No, no, who suffered of brain injuries. So just look for the smallest number. So in this case, the smallest number is um, number of severe brain injury per thousand. You find out that is 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 Africa. Yes, it is what it is Africa. Mm. Yes. Explain why this data may not be accurate for the region named. We don't have enough equipment to detect. Not everybody who have brain injury is reported how do they know that why is this if you look at uh, this you see that the the countries which are more developed or continents which are more developed are the one which have more and uh, severe brain injuries it means that they have enough equipment to detect and then the poor ones they have fewer does that make sense yet the, the developed ones they have, yes, equipment, they can treat, they can do what. But why is it that they have more? It's because they try to detect. While Africa, very few areas have, or very few countries have these machines to detect the brain injuries. Hence, that's why the data might not be uh, accurate. Yes, not everybody who has a brain injury is being reported. Yes. All right, data below shows. So we so we are going to draw a, a bar graph. Bar graph here, I'm just going to give a hint uh, whereby here you draw. You must have x axis, y axis. We told you use the principle called the ID. I ID, which means independent, dependent. Then I said principle x, y, which means that this one goes on the x axis, this goes on the y axis. As I told you that in most cases, the first column is independent. The second column usually is dependent. That's it. Then you plot your bar graph. Make sure that these bars are equal in size. Just drawing a, a rough equal in size. The space here must be equal the same size. Ne? Title, 
please give a title. Ne? Yes, it, you must include. Table below shows the recorded number of the you know, per thousand in the so um bar graph showing showing the recorded until you reach the, the word yes then so it means that you put the x here and then you put the y here don't forget to put units if they are there and then still here and then make sure that the scale here is good maybe you can start from 500 600 700 it must be good interval ne? same interval yeah then you get all your marks in most cases what we mark is um type of graph caption x and y then you say plotting uh plotting yeah that, 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 that's where the, then scale yes scale so that's where the marks come from so if you didn't swap so they always give conditions there uh -huh. the year the last question uh last 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 second last ne? a is tympanic membrane b is semicircular canal c is cochlear d is of a round window okay the thing identify c c is equal clear you have said it and then function of d d it absorbs it absorbs this d absorbs excess pressure excess excess pressure from the inner ear or it releases excess pressure from the inner ear uh they're saying the receptor c is organ of corti organ of corti explain uh why building up of wax in a in a yes may result in temporary hearing loss it means that if you remove the wax then you'll be able to hear again so it means that when the wax is there wax wax will block block the transmission of the sound to tympanic membrane and then less sound will be received less wave and less will be transmitted hence you have hearing problem grommets are small device used to use uh, that allows the air to move into and out of the middle ear this prevents the pressure build uh -huh. All right. Explain how these grommets in treatment uh, of middle ear infection prevents hearing loss. First of all, when the fluid is released, yes, it 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 makes the tympanic membrane known to have too much pressure on the other side of the tympanic membrane, and then now it it, it gives the free the, the tympanic membrane can move in and out, free movement. So that it can create. So it means that if grommet is there, it gives that free movement so that it can create the pressure and then the pressure can what? Can, can move. Uh, number two, if 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 grommet is there, yes. Remember, grommets they 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 allow this pass to go through. So if they ask you that, explain how the use of grommet treat. Treatment in the middle ear infection prevents this hearing loss. It means that it prevents the rupturing, the rupturing or the past of the what? Of the tympanic membrane, and then you won't be, and, and then uh, you remain, you will be able to hear because the tympanic membrane did not rupture, did not break. Number two, middle ear infection causes this fluid to block the middle ear a station tube automatically is blocked also so if they pass or if that fluid is drained therefore it means that even the station tube can equalize the pressure on the either side of the tympanic membrane and then the person will be able to hear lastly if uh, the fluid is drained it means that uh, the tympanic membrane and oscos they can transmit the impulse to the inner ear without any without any problem describe the how the receptor b receptor in b in part b okay um involved in maintaining balance and when there is change in speed and direction here what you need to know
Um, here, what you need to know is uh, describe the, which receptors are there. They are saying speed and direction. When you talk about speed and direction, speed and direction, this is we are talking about the cre cristae. Yes. The cristae. So these cristae, yes, they are very important in where are they found? In the ampulla. Ampulla. Uh, yes, change in speed and direction stimulates this uh, cristae. So you will get this stick for the cristae found in the ampulla and then the ampulla of the semicircular canal. Yes. And then what happens? This cristae will change will change, will be stimulated and will convert the stimulus, stimulus into, into nerve impulse. And then uh -huh, what happens to nerve impulse? The nerve impulse will be transmitted, transmitted along auditory, auditory nerve. Yes, auditory nerve. Auditory nerve, yes, to which part of the brain? So auditory nerve, this can be a tick, this can be a tick, auditory nerve, to which part of the brain to cerebellum? For interpretation to restore that balance. So is crystal in the ampulla stimulated, converts the stimulus to a nerve impulse, and then nerve impulse is um, transmitted along the auditory nerve, to cerebrum interpretation to restore balance. 3.4, they're saying, okay, wearing face mask, commanded use the speed. Um, I'm trying to be fast because of the time wearing, okay. Let's get mask. So you have to read all this and then find out what they want. As I told you that independent variable, read the first statement or the second statement, you'll find the independent and dependent variable always indicated there as i told you so this is the statement i'm talking about scientists investigated the effect of wearing mask on carbon dioxide level in the blood so it means that the carbon dioxide level will depend on uh the wearing of the what the mask so carbon dioxide becomes dependent and the mask wearing becomes independent so i think that one we have got it then they're saying that state two factors which we are taken into consideration when they are doing this in experiment or investigation. Uh, here they say that they obtain permission. Yeah. First of all, you have to get the permission. Yes. But what did they put in, 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 in consideration? What are they looking? Which kind of individuals were they looking at? Check. Obtain permission from 150 healthy volunteers. 150. Those were healthy. It means that they will have to look at, they have to consider people who are healthy. So the health, see now, the health, the health of the participants or the volunteers. Number two, the age, because they said they had to consider the age. Age below or above 30, they don't take you. So those are some of the considerations they, they, they did before. It's not everybody. Set one reason why the results end in the investigation may be considered reliable. Why is it? Remember, reliability is to increase the sample size. But I think we have to know the tense they have used. Explain one reason why the results at the end of this investigation may be considered. At the end of this investigation may be considered, uh, yes, it's because they used 150, 150 healthy volunteers, meaning that that's a big sample size. Yes, so don't say that increase the sample size. How? They use 150 volunteers. Then they are saying that mm, um, give one reason why the results are you know, okay. And then explain the why it's uh, allowed to minutes interval. Uh, for each phase. The reason why they did that, so that to expel the carbon dioxide, which was uh, obtained during that experiment, so that when a new uh, phase or new 
yes phase is starting we know that that carbon dioxide we're gonna find there is gonna be the original carbon dioxide the breathing rate the heartbeat they will go back to normal so that now it's like we are starting afresh give the reason why carbon dioxide level carbon dioxide levels were measured at the beginning the reason why we want to control do the control experiment so this act as a control control experiment to see that the carbon dioxide which is being produced it came from the mask issue not uh they have been producing this carbon dioxide we have to see before and then after applying the mask or without a mask or uh, the activity describe the homeostatic control of carbon dioxide here when we talk about remember this the only homeostasis which does not have a negative feedback mechanism which does not have the other side only has one side so in this case you have to talk about medulla medulla oblongata will yes will we will detect um using its um chemoreceptors will detect and then once detect it's going to send the impulse to the heart so medulla you have to talk about medulla medulla yes and then the medulla will send the impulse to the heart then the heartbeat is going to increase so that more blood is pumped to the lungs the lungs still the breathing rate is going to increase and then this is going to expel carbon dioxide out of the body yeah so basically that's what you need. medulla is the heartbeat say medulla sending the impulse to the heart so medulla is going to detect the blood by help of the chemoreceptors the blood carbon dioxide is it means that it's too much acidic because once carbon dioxide is there once carbon dioxide is there remember it has water there and then it forms carbonic acid uh carbonic acid sorry this is chemistry ne? yes uh carbonic acid this carbonic acid is, is the one the ions the the, the the acidity of the blood is going to be high and then they will know that carbon dioxide yes carbon dioxide is high in the blood therefore medulla will the the impulse will be sent to the uh the the, the medulla will we will, will detect with the help of chemoreceptors the medulla will send the impulse to the heart and the heartbeat is going to increase pushing more blood to the lungs and then um the lungs is the heart the, the breathing is going the breathing the depth and the rate of the breathing is also going to increase expelling carbon dioxide from the body and then uh, the level of carbon dioxide will go back to normal in the blood lastly 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 uh -huh. this one is uh, an extract still this one you can answer uh not too much of uh, science state two places where oxygens are being produced from the shoot and the tip ne? Uh, from the shoot and the root and then they are talking about state two ways in which oxygens increase the length of the stem how do these oxygens uh, increase the length of 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 of, of what of um, these plants basically oxygens they increase by increasing the cell elongation or enlargement there will be a cell elongation actually growth is the length is cell enlargement and cell elongation and then growth will happen say to other one other plant hormone that cause uh, uh that cause increase in the length of the stem this one is you talk about gibberellin you have to know the the the, 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 the spelling G B rins, gibberellins. Yeah, the gibberellins. That is the answer. It works together with the oxygen. Actually, there is a direct effect of gibberellins on oxygen. How oxygen work? But we don't talk about it here. Yeah, you'll find it at the university. Explain how oxygens can be used to um to uh, be used in plants to plant propagation propagation to the advantage of the nature conservation remember when the plants maybe they have died or because of the disaster or something like that oxygens yes we have seen that it stimulates the root check here they say that it stimulates the root oxygen stimulates the root development in cutting so it means that what we do is we just do the cuttings of the stem of the roots and uh, um, cuttings of the stem 
and then or roots and then we go plant them once you plant them then automatically the oxygen is gonna stimulate this root developments in cutting you understand and then now the plant will grow again so each cutting will become a plant therefore it means that the nature will be conserved again if there was maybe a disaster or wildfire or deforestation which happened uh, yes so which we, we can plant these plants easily and then the conservation will come back to normal this marks the beginning of the end of the paper i expect everyone to get 150 marks the paper was cheap yeah, yeah. see you thank you for being with me msid as usual um we are launching uh a, we'll be helping students next year 24 7. tell your friend tell your sister subscribe msid and thunder eduk we will find help from there and the material will always be found at our website check the description there will be a link in all our videos which take you to the website or just type thunder duke um dot com you'll be able to get all the information you need you can even ask questions then we can help you please if you want to get the answer on time most especially i'm talking about next year please ask on time so that we can have enough time to fix you in thank you very much god bless you uh let's discuss the question paper of 2022 uh november we see the memorandum how uh, people performed the uh in this paper msid as usual download it from thundereduke.com check the link in the description below um section a various options are provided it means that you're supposed to look for a b c d which one of the following maintains the shape of the eyeball the eyeball is being maintained by vitreous humor uh, let me check the nice color to use i love that so is vitreous humor uh, let me check let me check sorry mm, yep. Um, yep all right sorry for that eh? just to confirm if everything's working well okay the answer is c cornea no lens no the shape is being maintained by vitreous humor so there you get two marks then they're saying that the choroid dash uh, rich supplied with blood vessels containing photoreceptors flex lights and impulse no the answer is uh, a richly supplied with blood vessels so two marks um going through very fast um just a highlight of uh this paper they have written uh, without explaining that too much but uh, if i say that there is a need to explain a bit i'll just do just a hint uh, they're saying that um 1.3 which one of the following occurs immediately after fertilization um when after fertilization you form a zygote which forms a morula which forms a blastula which forms the outer layer which is called the, uh chorionic uh chorion forms finger like projection to form um chorionic villi and then implantation so uh blastula can't be the first can't morula yes but it's not hollow so it's out blastula no so the answer is d two marks so morula is a solid ball of cells then you're saying that on hot day uh expect more sweat ne? yeah so you're saying that less blood vessel no sweat gland become inactive inactive no uh, blood uh, more blood flow through the surface of the skin yes vasoconstriction no so the answer is c so you get two marks here then they are saying that um the normal shape 
uh, sorry, the normal site where fertilization occurs in a female is uterus, no, ovary, no, vagina, no, fallopian tube, yes. Get two marks there. So it means that on that first page, you're supposed to get 10. Uh, then you're saying that uh, 1.6, which one of the following is best describes the event of uh, accommodation when a person is um, when a person is viewing the object which is less than six meters. Less than six meters, it means that uh, this is near vision. Yes, if it's less than six meters, uh, remember in near vision, the lens must become more convex. And then the suspensor ligament must slacken. So let's look at uh, slackening. So it means that the answer may either be this or this. So this one is out now. This one is out. And then they're saying that uh, ciliary muscles must um, must be, they must contract because they work antagonistically. This slackens, the other one must contract. So for the answer is B. Mm. So this one, it means this one is wrong. Ah, they're saying that um, the axon, so this is a sensory neuron. The axon is represented by the structure. The axon, axon means the part of the of the in, uh, neuron which takes impulse away from the cell body. So if the this is the cell body, so this is what you call the axon. So the answer is gonna be number four. So number four, you get two marks there again. Then they are saying that um, which one of the following levels affect uh, the speed of impulse, transmission of impulse, the speed is being affected by the myelin sheath, is acting as an insulator. So in this case, if you look at this diagram, you'll find out that the myelin sheath is this, which is number three. Therefore, the answer here is gonna be this. Then they are saying that um, this 1.1.9 up to 1.110 uh, procedure so as, as follow. So they are saying that the far to the diagram below uh, that shows the investigation done to determine the effect of auxins on tropism. Uh, this is the procedure. They are saying the potted plant placed the horizontal clonostat. Clonostat is this machine which rotates. Then the plant was exposed to light from all directions, meaning that your photo, photo, phototropism will not affect. Uh, growth was observed after a few days. So how did it grow? Number one, they are saying that which one of the following is an explanation of the results? Okay, phototropism cause no. We said that phototropism will not affect. So whenever there is phototropism, we cancel it out. So the answer might be this or this. But they're saying that eutropism causes the auxins to move downwards because it is horizontally. Uh, look, if horizontally, if auxins are here at the tip, yes, they will be pulled downwards, yes, due to gravity. So we'll have much concentration of auxins this side. And then if you have much concentration of this auxins this side, the lower side will grow faster than the upper side and then it will grow like that but because the light was distributed equally so what caused this to bend is basically due to gravity which is the uh, geotropism therefore the answer the reason occurs because auxins move downwards so the answer becomes b so this one becomes wrong i think that um control for the same investigation was set up uh, by putting the identical pot plant uh, on a rotating clonostat. So the clonostat now is rotating. It means that it will bring about equal distribution of auxins. So auxins, uh, in this case, will be equally distributed, and then there will be no effect. So uh, they are saying that no, there will be no growth will be there. Stem will go upward. No, stem will grow down. Stem will grow horizontally. It means that the stem will come.
uh, just a, sorry for just a small um um delay there there are some technical issues all right i was saying that um this causes the the stem will grow horizontally why because this clinostat the clinostat will rotate as this clinostat rotates yes the auxins will be distributed equally and then now the 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 the, the at a certain time t let me just say at a certain time t uh, so that now every part will receive the auxins equally at a certain time t and then now the growth will be equally and then now it will grow horizontally instead of bending so let's go to the biological terms so now it means that you are supposed to get 10 marks plus 10 marks which is 20 marks hmm. Uh, biological terms, the part of the skull which uh, protects the, the brain, say that is called the, cranium. Yes, it's called the cranium. Homeostasis process whereby temperature is controlled by the body. Thermal regulation. And then there's a visual defect characterized by cloudy. Cloudy is cataracts. Saying that the blood vessel which transports deoxygenated blood from the fetus. If it's from the fetus, it means that from the heart towards the other parts of the body, which is the placenta. So since it's from the heart, therefore it's going to have the word artery. And then since we are talking about the baby, then it's going to become umbilical, umbilical artery umbilical artery then they are saying that the part of the brain which controls temperature is hypothalamus Then they are saying that the branch of the nervous system that is made up of spinal and the cranial nerves is called this since it is it's not if not the center then it's on sides which is the peri peri nervous system you complete it yes a finger-like projection which is developed uh, outer membrane of the embryo so remember that you have the hollow ball of cells of hollow ball of cells this hollow ball of cells it forms outer layer which forms finger-like projection outer layer is called chorion finger-like projection because it's coming from the chorion so it becomes the villus the villi of the chorion, hence chorionic villi. So it's going to be, answer is going to be chorionic villi. Yes. Let us say the hormone that regulates the salt in the body is aldosterone. They say the fruit that protects the developing fetus against mechanical injury for the amniotic fluid it's called amniotic fluid sorry for the handwriting they're saying the area of the retina which contains the highest concentration of the cones it's called yellow spot yeah that is that part of the uh, of the retina then they're saying that both a and b are matching columns plant hormone that inhibits it inhibits it makes the growth not possible ne? The, 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 the germination not possible inhibits so the answer is this one promotes germination while well, this one inhibits that's why this one is works in summer this one works in winter so the answer is b the functional connection between two successful neurons connection between two successful uh, uh or consecutive uh neurons we call it um uh, synapse synapse Yes, so it means that the answer here, how do you write A? No, 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 no. B only. And then here, A only. Hormone that stimulates puberty. Testosterone in male, oestrogen in female. So the answer is both A and B. And B. Yes. Then they are saying that um, diagram below shows the condition 
of the eye for different light intensities when viewing the same object. Uh -huh. You're viewing the same object. Give the letter, give the letter name of the part, the one, the letter, and the name. So if they want the letter and the name, so what is it? Of the part that contains uh, uh, muscles, contains muscles. Uh, which muscles are they uh, talking about? About the sutura and the radio muscles. So in this case, um, it's going to be the B, which is the iris. So the answer is going to be...